I have a woodworking project that I needed to clamp together and have a nice long DeWalt clamp, but it's like a half an inch too short. Then I realized that I could take a couple of low cost Harbor Freight clamps, take the ends off and connect them with a 3D print. But would it be strong enough? And what's the best way to print it? Standing up or laying down? Well, I'll show you how I designed this and the best way to print it on today's Filament Friday. This week's video is brought to you by these Patreon supporters. Here's the design I created. It's very basic, very simple. I did this in Tinkercad. It literally took me about five minutes. And I didn't need it special, a like Fusion 360 or anything like that. So I made this and then I exported it and imported it into Cura. Now I'm going to print this at a 0.2 layer height using my Magic 0.28 profile. So it's going to be really rough. And also, I'm going to just use a 25% density, infill density, but because I've got like three outer layers, it's not going to matter. It's mostly going to be solid. So let me slice it here and I'll show you what this looks like inside under preview mode. So I'll slide down and let's look a little closer. In fact, I'll run this in animation so you can see how it's going to print. Now this one, I didn't use any supports because it's small enough. It should bridge just fine. You can see it just builds the walls pretty much solid and fills in any gap. So this is uh, pretty standard laying it down sideways. Now what I want to do is print it standing up. And here it is printed standing up with the same settings. But you can see the layer lines are now going 90 degrees to where they were when it was laying down. So that's the real test. Which is better? Laying down or standing up? So that's what I'm going to test with the actual clamps. And this is how these clamps work. You can unscrew the end and there's a bolt inside this cap. It comes off, you slide it off, and then you bring in the other clamp that I took the cap off already. And now I can connect these two with the 3D print. So the 3D print slides on, and there's a little pin to stop it from going too far, but the holes will line up with the holes in the bar. So I'm gonna use those same bolts that I unscrewed, and there's no nut. It's actually, I sized the holes so they would screw right into the plastic. So the plastic's acting, I'm kind of cutting threads here a little bit and I'll tighten these up and then these two will be connected. So here's the finished modified unit. I got clamps on both sides, the connector in between them, and I can just press these triggers and it'll clamp together. I got two sets of clamps connected with 3D prints and connected to the wood, but I haven't really tightened anything down yet. The difference between these two is the red one was printed standing up, so the layer lines are going this way. Now the force of these clamps is going to pull outward and when this standing up one is put on its side the layer lines are actually perpendicular to that force where the black one was actually printed laying down. So the layer lines are parallel to the force. Now which is better? We'll see. What I'm going to do is tighten these clamps and see if they survive. Just to be safe, I don't want shrapnel in my eyes, I'm going to wear some safety glasses. So I'm going to clamp this red one first. Well, let's see what happens. Seems to hold pretty good. I'll clamp one side, then the other. So it broke. It took some force, but this one broke. And at two different spots, a layer line here and a layer line there. So it didn't split in the center, it basically split right around the hole. Now I'll try the one that's horizontal to the force and see how it holds up. I can't get it to break. Now I reversed them. I have a black one that was printed standing up and a red one that is printed laying down. So let's see if we'll eliminate the plastic used. Let's see if one breaks and one doesn't. So here's the one in front. This is the one that was printed standing up. Wow, that quit broke right away. So clearly the red print was better than the black and this one broke right along a straight line. Now the black one was printed on an Ender 3. The red one was printed on my CR10 Mini. I don't know if that has any effect, but let's try the red one now, horizontal. Uh. 
Once again, I can't break this one. So it turns out it did fail. I just didn't notice it wasn't in this direction. When I loosen this up, you can see how it's sagging here in the center. When I lifted this up, I noticed the layers had separated. The bar not being stiff allowed this thing to pivot and that cracked the layer line right along here. Didn't pull apart, so it still held the boards together, but it split there. So it's not a permanent solution. I'm not sure I can even print that and make it stronger, but I'll play with it some. But then it occurred to me, why can't I use a second 3D print? If I print a small coupling, they'll slide over the original coupling, like this, very, very simple, and print this uh, layer lines flat and then turn it 90 degrees, I can slide it over the original coupling like this. So I'll just slide it over to the top, to the middle, and now I got two more to put on the ends. But now I've got layer lines going one direction and layer lines going the other. And just to make it stronger, like I said, I'll put these on the ends. And I made these just a half a millimeter bigger than the original coupling, so they slide on pretty tight. So now I can put this together and we can test it. Here's the finished new version. You can see the two bolts are in place and the three little pieces are holding it. So now I can put this on the wood and really crank this down and see if it's going to work. I've got the best of both worlds. I've got the red one that was printed laying down so its layer lines are in parallel to the force. And then the force is trying to split this thing going up and down. These little black pieces are preventing that because they're printed flat and then turned 90 degrees so their layer lines are in series or in line with the force trying to split the red one. And when I crank in this guy, I can crank all the way down. I've tried numerous times. I can't get it to split. And this thing is definitely more solid than it was before. Very, very solid. Plus these little black pieces kind of lifted off the wood. So it keeps the red lifted a little bit. So there's less force on it. So overall, this is a great combination. Printing in two different directions, two different pieces that could be printed together and then slid together to make this clamp. Now this is not an original idea. Irwin Quick Clamps have something very similar and you can buy it on Amazon, but they're like around 12 bucks. And they got pins that push in instead of screw in and it goes on the end of an Irwin clamp and then pushes into the hole. And it's, it's pretty strong, it's plastic, but it's, it's a very, very strong plastic. The problem is these things don't fit my clamps from Harbor Freight. And this particular clamp is one of my other big ones. It's the same as the DeWalt. It's like a half an inch short. So I could have used this if I took the pads off and the Irwin, but I wanted to try this out because there's other times where I need even longer because I can mix and match these and make any size clamp I want. And I save $12 every time I do this because this couldn't have cost me more than a dollar in plastic. And I can print new ones if I break it and have a bunch of them around when I want to make any kind of clamp size I want. So having a 3D printer, being able to do this, and now I know to make it strong with these two different directions solves a lot of problems for me in the future. So I really have all the clamps I need. I can now make any size I want.